Hey everyone, we're lucky to have Joshua Pais today on our channel. Joshua is a student at the University of Toronto. He is an Intel intern and he has done internships at Amazon and Bloomberg. He's a track star and he's an avid member of the Nesby community. So say a big hello to Joshua. How are you doing, Joshua? I'm doing great, Kev. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. I mean, these are the top tech internships you're looking at Amazon, Bloomberg, Intel. So uh, we're so lucky to have you today just to tell us, man, like what's going on in these companies. Couple quick questions just to start it off. Um, are you are you a Mac kind of guy, PC kind of guy? Uh, what are you saying here? Ah, uh, this is a good question. Um, so I currently own a Mac. Okay. Uh, I have a MacBook Pro, but most of my internships I've been using PC just because they allow you to do a lot more. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. iPhone, Android. Uh, iPhone, iPhone for you. Yes. iPhone for you. Okay, yeah. yeah. And um, favorite language? You got you got one of those or? Um. I don't, nah, I, don't, I don't think I have a favorite language. Yeah, not favorite language yet, yeah. yeah let's, let's hear a little bit about you, uh, like where you're studying, what you're studying, and kind of kind of like your little path to the, these three internships. Okay, yeah, of course. Um, so, hey everyone, um, I'm Joshua. Um, I'm currently on my PUI, so that stands for professional experience here at the University of Toronto. I'm doing electrical and computer engineering. I'm currently the financial director at the BSA, which is the Braxton Association. I'm also the vice chair of finance for Flash Week Orientation, so Flash Week 21 for the engineering community. And uh, for my internships, honestly, the whole approach to getting them was, it was a bit stressful to be completely honest. Um, there's a lot of interviews during classes, a lot of prioritization, trying to optimize, having good application, reaching out to people to know the best way to interview, to prepare, and while still trying to you know, keep up with your education and your grades, and having a good sleep schedule, because that's also very important. So you said it's an electrical and computer engineering degree, right? Yes. So, so I can see that with the Intel, are you more on the hardware side? Is it? Are you going into the electrical side on these internships, or why, why are you going for that degree instead of like computer science or something like that? Okay, no, that's a very good question. Um, so I personally chose engineering just because I think it's uh, one for the reputation that comes with it. The engineering path is uh, is a hard path, but I think it's very rewarding in the sense you get exposed to a lot of different fields as opposed to um, if you went straight to computer science, then right off from your first year and second year, you're doing strictly computer science tailored content, right? But in engineering, during your first year, they give you a taste of different things. So I did take some chem courses, I did take some MD, some CIF courses, and then that way you truly get to decide if this is the path for you while still being a very reputable program. So that's sort of my whole preference between like the engineering route for sort of like tech as opposed to a computer science route. And you get an iron ring, right? At the end? And you do get an iron ring, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so do you need like, do you need an engineering uh, background or what kind of background do you typically find at, at these internships? Okay, um, honestly, you do find majority of engineers at these internships, but there's also a good populace of computer science, just due to the fact that um, when it really comes down to it, we are learning the same content and the same skills. So we're both equally qualified and it's just, who has the best application from there on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, like, what if, what if someone's like, for example, just doing like a boot camp? Have you ever seen that? Someone just does a boot camp, gets those internships, or is that like a harder path for people? Okay, um, I, I may not be the best, the best to speak on that, but I do know a lot of these companies tend to go for um, applicants that are registered at a university as opposed to people who are doing like freelance, just learning on the side. Um, there are a few other companies that are a bit more receptive to that, so as I said, I'm not well versed in that area to speak on this. Um, but I would say most of the other interns I've gotten to know, I've gotten to know, gotten to work with, they have mainly been uh, university students. So you're saying most people do it through the university? Is it like an internal portal that you do it, or sometimes you gotta go outside of that? That's a great question. So um, a lot of university does have do have internal portals that you can help utilize to reach out to companies and just to find the job postings and listings and all this additional information. Um, so the UFT has the PUI portal. I believe Waterloo have their own thing. McMaster and different schools have their own uh, portal system to job postings. And these are the um, Canadian schools, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are Canadian schools. And to sort of speak on that, I think these are great. 
Um, they do have a lot of um, good positions on there, but please do not limit your search to just those portals because if you really think about it, the students you're competing with are also using those portals. So you want to kind of broaden your horizon and look elsewhere. So um, LinkedIn, um, Indeed, and you also just want to reach out to people, right? So when you speak to people, you learn more about what opportunities are out there, what skills managers or interviewers are looking for, and I think that will best prepare you. Also, and again, this is not applicable in a pandemic situation, but I strongly do recommend going to career fairs because just getting that one-on-one, -on -one, having to give someone your resume as opposed to applying online, I think that yields in a higher um, rate of return. No, for sure, that's exactly how I got a bunch of my jobs, just being able to talk to someone, get their email, send to them straight up. And like, so, so for, you're an international too, so Amazon, uh, wh which one of these did you do in Canada, which ones did you do in the US? Okay. Um, so this is actually um, kind of a funny story, right? So my initial internships, um, some were to be in the US, but the whole pandemic, all my internships were remote, right? But the initial plan was, I was going to intern at Bloomberg in New York. Um, I had worked out, um, they were providing housing, I'd worked out all of those uh, logistical issues. And um, well, the whole pandemic, that had to be revamped to convert it to a work, work at home internship. And then with Amazon, I was always going to work in Toronto. So it's going to be go to New York and come back to Toronto. And then for, for Intel, I was actually supposed to go to San Jose um, to go work with the team there. Um, but yeah, pandemic and uh, convert it to a remote work. But I would say the companies did a great job in terms of like remodeling their entire like intern program to really help accommodate people who are working remotely. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Does Intel, like, do you do any hardware on the Intel side? Um, so I do not do any direct hardware work. Um, in my Intel position is um, I'm a project management intern, so it's less on the technical side, which means most of my day to day is more uh, managerial roles in terms of speaking to team, ensuring that we're staying along with schedule, meeting our quarterly marks, and every now and then I will be assigned projects that are very technical just to like help out a team or to help ensure we meet a certain deadline. Okay, and, and is that kind of different from? Uh, we did at Bloomberg and Amazon. Were those more software engineering roles? So yeah, yeah. At um, at Bloomberg, it was um, I was I was a software intern. At Amazon, also a software intern. Um, so yeah, those are purely technical roles where you're assigned your intern project. Um, you have your mid um, intern session evaluation at the end where you present your final work. Um, in terms of transition, um, honestly, I think my first internship, which was Bloomberg, was the most. Uh, interesting because that was my first exposure to more of a professional setting, right? So again, to understand what's expected of you, how to properly articulate yourself when speaking to your manager or your team members, um, kind of how often you should ping your members on, um, uh, we call it IV, so like, just like the instant um, Bloomberg message that we use. Yeah, kind of like Slack or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I got exposed to Bloomberg Terminal, which is phenomenal. Um, it's a great terminal. Uh, the amount of research and information on there is just superb. Uh, but yeah, just that exposure to the first like professional sentence um, really was a learning curve. But afterwards, going to Amazon, I understood, okay, this is how often you should give updates. This is when you should reach out. This is the amount of research that's adequate preparation you can have on a roadblock before you then reach out to someone um, in order to be as efficient and as self-driven as possible. So, so is that something they make you do? They make you have like a project and then you do midterm, mid, mid internship evaluations at the end? So um, yeah, I can, I can sort of speak, speak on the structure of that. So for um, at Bloomberg, you're given your intern project, uh, you're told the scope of it, the requirements, and all the features you need to implement for it. And you have, you have your manager and you have your mentor, right? So your mentor you meet with on a daily basis, just to provide updates and you roadblocks you're on. And then your manager is more on a weekly basis just to check in on you, see how you're doing. I think they have a great, phenomenal intern project. You really feel like you're part of a team and you really feel like you're treated Honestly, as a full-timer, right, with the amount of like effort people put into your work and feedback you get in your daily scrubs or your daily meetings, it really, it really does help you feel a sense of belonging. Um, and yeah, but as you said, and there is there is a midsummer eval just to kind of see your progress, see if you need to rework your milestones. And a lot of times, you want to group your project into like milestones so you can track your progress um, moving forward. So it's kind of a midsummer mid, mid internship evaluation there, and then. I think closer to the end, you do have a presentation where you either present within your team or honestly, your department as a whole. I was fortunate enough to present to my department as a whole, got a lot of positive feedback. So that was honestly amazing just to hear. And then I guess to speak on Amazon. So Amazon also had a similar structure, um, except I feel like uh, with Amazon, everything was more laid out for you in the sense that 
prior to you starting, you had all your milestones laid out for you. Okay, this is what you need to do by this week, by your uh, week two or week three, you should have this completed. So all that information was there for you. And obviously, if there's any um, roadblocks, you have the ability to either like uh, move things early or push things back, depending like if you're moving quickly through something or slower uh, through other projects. Um, but yeah, similarly, you sort of have like a mid eval where you have like a uh, meeting with your manager to get uh, creative, um, positive criticism um, to give you feedback on how best to approach moving forward, things to improve on and things you're doing great at. Um, and then based off that, you then work, again, Amazon also has a manager and a mentor program, so you don't work further with your mentor to help finalize and implement whatever is left to be completed. So what, when you when you did that, how long were the hours where you, where you worked? Did they kind of vary between the companies? Um, okay, uh, I'd say for for Bloomberg and for Amazon, the hours were uh, pretty set. So at Bloomberg, I did uh, a 9 to 6. Uh, and Amazon was also a 9 to 6. Um, people were very respectful of that. You're never expected to come in like um, post that time or pre that time. You're never expected to work over the weekend. Um, people were respectful of that time. You had like an hour for your lunch, you get to a nice break, relax. Um, so yeah, no, it, was, it was a very set hour. Um, at Intel, I've been project management, so it, it is a bit different. Um, as I mentioned, I work with a variety of teams. So I work with teams based in Toronto, based in Cali, or based in Penang. So if I need to set up a meeting with a manager based in Penang, I'll need to do it during their, their hours. So I tend to have, every now and then, I do have late meetings to just help accommodate for that. But I'll say overall, though, you still work the standard um, 40 hours, maybe give or take an extra like three to four hours here and there. But for the most part, you do stick to 40 hours. Here. When I was on Microsoft, uh, it was kind of expected that you'd get the 40 hours, but how you got it really didn't matter. You could kind of come in as early as you want, leave as late as you want. It's just, it's just uh, cool comparing these cultures. And how was the pay uh, for interns, like especially across, compared to the US and Canada, uh, what do you think about like even as you get your next internships, does it go up? How does that work? Okay, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get into specifics, but I can kind of give you guys a ballpark so you get a better understanding. So, as I said, with my initial uh, contract with Bloomberg, I was to work in the States, but um, due to the fact that pandemic, COVID-19, um, I had to work remotely, so the pay has to be adjusted for the area you're working at, right? So what Bloomberg did is based on your region or area that determines sort of what you pay. You still got paid competitively compared to like the area you're at, so I was still paid very well when I was working from Toronto, but it was a, a bit less than what I would have been making if I was based in New York. Um, and then for Amazon, that was always to work in Toronto, so there was no um, pay reduction there, and Amazon pays very competitively. Um, at, in at Intel, again, I was supposed to work in San Jose, so I was going to be paid in USD, and then after conversion, so it ended up being a little bit less, but again, all these three companies, I think, they did convert your pay to account for what you'd be working, but still, in comparison to my other friends who are also doing professional experience here and working, it's still a very competitive thing. And how did you balance your social life with, with work and uh, possibly you have to interview for the next, you know, for the next position? How did you balance all that together? Um, that's, that's a great question. Honestly, um, obviously initially with my first um, internship at Bloomberg, it was a bit challenging just like knowing how to best separate like uh, personal time as opposed to work time. Because obviously you're new at a company, there's a whole like notion of imposter syndrome, like am I really needing, living up to expectations, right? I need to put extra work in there. But I think speaking to your mentor and being very upfront and having a good mentor, they kind of explain to you what's expected of you, what's understandable. And based off that, you really get to know, okay, no one does expect me to work like ridiculous hours. It's okay if I have a roadblock and once I communicate it. And then based off that, I was able to have a social life um, and, and still be able to like meet, meet up with friends, um, still be acting with my family and things like that. Even in addition to that, like even though I was interviewing for like other, um, while trying to line up these positions, right? I was scheduled interviews during my lunch times to be respectful of my current employer, um, make sure there's no conflict with that. Um, I was also involved in um, other things with the school during my professional experience here because I personally like to give back to the community. So during my PUI, I did orientation, which I kind of touched on a bit for the engineering community. I was a BSA financial director while working these um, internships for this like, academic year. Um, so yeah, you're definitely able to balance your work and still be involved in different things if you have good uh, time management and prioritize kind of what you want from all of this. And when it came to the interviews, how did you prepare for them? Like, leak code, did you use books? What's the strategy behind yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So 
I definitely reviewed a lot of my course contents because um, I think University of Toronto does an excellent job in preparing you for a lot of these interviews. Um, you're, you're taught a lot in all the different areas and fields that, you, that they could throw a question at you. Um, but in addition to that, I definitely recommend doing some more uh, code and interview type questions. So either like lead code or hacker rank. And another big one is reaching out to people. So a lot of times people reach out solely to full timers at these um, positions, which I think is great. I got a few responses here and there, but often you will, often you will get left in red because people kind of get tired of people going back and forth with them. So I also do recommend reaching out to other people who have interned there, right? So even like yourself, care like if I'm interested in like getting to Microsoft, kind of speak to you on okay, how did you go about it? Because I feel like interns are still kind of students, so they have more free time or they're more understanding of kind of your mindset or approach. So that's another like avenue I definitely would recommend when applying to these companies here. For sure, uh, that's gonna be helpful for so many people. I just heard that. I mean, talking to interns, yeah, that that because you're gonna you're gonna be you're going for an internship. You should talk to the person just interview for the internship. It's more realistic than you know, the person that just got the full time position. And like you said, they'll have more time to just talk to you. Of course, of course. Of course. So uh, the last thing is, do you have any like general tips for people applying to these internships? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it's a long process. <laughs> that's the first thing I would say. Uh, be patient and sort of understand your self-worth. Um, in applying to these positions, you, you will get a lot of rejections. Um, sometimes you may not get it your first time. Be confident, bounce back, go reapply. Um, and then also make sure with each application you sort of take your time in it. So prioritize quality over quantity, right? So if you are applying to Bloomberg, for example, yes, put in your application and then go apply to other places you want to apply, but don't just put in your application. Put in your application, speak to a few um, either Bloomberg interns or Bloomberg full-timers with the hope of when you do get an interview that you have sort of an understanding of what their work environment is like, um, what the community is like, and what your expectation as an intern would be. Right, um, that's one. And then the other thing is decision making, right? So like, there's obviously the tough part of getting these um, internships, but then also when deciding on uh, competing offers, you, you definitely want to know what you're trying to gain or take away from this experience. Because as I kind of mentioned, uh, my first two were more technical positions, but I also wanted to use my professional experience here to kind of get a sense of the, of the managerial aspect of um, software or tech companies. So that's kind of why I also want to excel with that, kind of like broaden my knowledge and understanding. So definitely know what you want and pursue that. It's definitely one of my advice I give. Sure, thanks for those tips. Um, Joshua, what do you think now you're gonna do for the next step? Like what's what's the next plan, say after school? Um, where do you think you're gonna go? Are you gonna go with like towards hardware, uh, management, or software engineering? Okay, wow, that, that's a great question. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, I guess first of all, before you even like, like speak on after school, um, even for, for this so for this coming up summer, I'm still I'm kind of debating on, on where I'm gonna like uh, end up because I currently have like a contract with Intel, um, so I'm still trying to decide if I'm to extend that or if I'm gonna do a, a fourth internship with a different company. So still working kind of that logistical aspect. But in terms of post graduation, I definitely want to get further technical experience. Um, I would say for three to five years into my career, I want to still have a purely technical role because industry standards change a lot, right? And if you don't have a vast amount of experience in those fields, I feel like it really does hinder or limit your career path in terms of growing or taking on new tasks, new responsibility, new types of technology. Um, so yeah, I definitely do want to have a more technical role excuse me, three to five years into my career. And then post that, I want to go into management, right? Because having that exposure at Intel is definitely something I think I have the skill for and I have the passion for in terms of meeting deadlines, how to kind of gain your company, your organization, more money, find money where to invest time and effort into. That's definitely like the end goal for me personally. But as I said, I do want to further improve my um, technological skill, either in web services, um, full stack, internal applications, things along those lines. So I think those are crucial if you do want to like, expand and grow in your career path. Right, because nothing, nothing's worse than when your manager doesn't understand the code and sure, exactly. exactly it takes it further i mean i want to hear a bit about uh you said you contribute back to community let's hear a little bit about nesby and other just passion projects um that you're working on okay yeah of course um, so Nesby, tell us what what is nesby yeah okay all right let, let's start here so um nesby we call it nesby but it stands for nsbe which stands for national society of black engineers um they're a great international organization that helps 
sort of provide representation for minority groups within the tech um, field. A lot of people are welcome. It's a great space and community for you to grow, get exposure to different tech companies. There's an annual convention that they hold at different locations to kind of give you um, more exposure so you understand how large of an organization it is and you know that they have connections honestly all over the world. Um, so NSBE, I started off as a senator, um, worked my way into president, and I helped put together a lot of um, NSB tailored events such as the NSB Hacks, which Kevin has helped out two years in a row now, so like, they thank you for that. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of uh, one way I like to give back. I was the head lead uh, for the second NSB Hacks, and then last year I did merchandise. Um, but yeah, so that's one way I give back. I'm also involved with the BSA. Um, I'm the financial director there. So what that role entails is sort of um, applying sponsors, sponsors, sponsorship um, funds for the club, helping to work out the financial logistical aspect of the club to so make sure we can kind of bring to the community a lot more events, um, initiatives that helps honestly tackle key issues while providing a space for you to grow, right? Because a lot of these clubs help you grow um, emotionally um, in terms of societal standards, but I also want these clubs to focus on also your career path, right? Because as much as you want to be aware of kind of what's troubling um, individuals in your positions and individuals that look or don't look like you, you also want to make sure you're kind of advancing yourself uh, in a professional sense so you can better your life overall, right? And kind of like take care of yourself better and better equipped to move forward in life. Um, so yeah, and then lastly, I think I'm, I'm also involved as the Vice Chair of Finance for Orientation 2T1. And this is uh, just giving back to the engineering community because uh, Frosh is a great experience. It was honestly wonderful for me to kind of be taken out by all these upper years to lead you and encourage you on the paths you can take or move forward with. So yeah, it's just sort of me giving back and kind of further contributing to society and trying to keep up the standard that I personally am accustomed to for the incoming first years or other people at the university that just want to get the most out of your engineering degree. All right, Joshua, so that was awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us all these tips and sharing your experience. Everyone, make sure you follow Joshua on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. He is open to questions, so if you have anything to ask him, just shoot him a question over there. And I'll see you guys in the next one.